Hey, welcome back everybody. Today we're gonna to do a comparison between Y blades and hammer blades on a flail mower. A pretty common question that I'm asked about, you know, which way to go, which is the right blade to get. Well, they are interchangeable, so if you get one and you wanna change your mind and get another one, you can replace those. But we're gonna do a little testing out today on a hammer blade and a Y blade machine. We're also gonna run a 60 inch cutter on a 25 horsepower tractor. Not this 25 horsepower tractor, it just couldn't handle it. But we'll show you how it does. As always, if you enjoyed the video, I'd love to get a thumbs up from you. Leave a comment down below. If you want to see more, hit subscribe. And if you want something for your tractor, check out goodworkstractors.com. So this is the Funny Top series. We've talked all about it before. These are a manual side shift if you want to. You can slide it all the way out this way, a little bit out to the other side too, or just kind of run it right behind your machine. Great for subcompacts and small compact tractors. There is a larger series as well that we carry, the Centurion, which is gonna be built bigger and beefier, heavier duty gearbox, meant for higher horsepower machines. They also have hydraulics to hydraulically side shift and tilt. So these units do not tilt, all right? They just shift to the side this way or that way, but they're gonna stay level the whole time. Now this is a 62 inch variant on a 1025R, a 25 horsepower tractor, about 18 horsepower or so at the PTO. Last year I ran a 52 inch, this year I've been running a 62 inch, mainly a Y blade, but I did save one of these hammer blade units just to do this test at some point. You know, it's late fall right now, a lot of you are gonna gear up for spring here. We have a limited quantity of flail mowers that are coming in. We had to order them back in July to get them next spring, it's crazy. So it's gonna be just a limited quantity. Once those are gone, they're gone. I highly doubt we're gonna be able to get any more in 2022. Okay, we're gonna mow a few different areas. We're actually, this is intentional, right? We did a lot of mowing with the bat wing in the big open areas, have some trimming to do, so to speak. And this is a good idea, a good solution right here with the smaller flail mower. I'm curious myself to see if we can tell the difference between what the Y blades do and the hammer blades. You know, your terrain, your vegetation may be a little bit different than what we have here. We have some areas that are just really grassy and weedy, some that are very woody and stemmy, and then some that are a mixture. Some of it's been cut already once, some of it hasn't. So it's a little bit of everything. You know, it's probably not every scenario under the sun, but we're gonna work with what we have here and at least get you some data points.
now it's time for some observations. My right foot, a down and back pass with the hammer blades. My left foot, a down and back pass with the Y blades. Now the first thing I noticed actually has nothing to do with cut quality. It's actually with the flail mowers themselves. The mower with hammer blades just seemed to be a little bit louder, I guess. Just had a louder feel, had a little bit almost more powerful feel, I guess, for lack of a better term, but just like it could go through anything. The wide blade mower was a lot quieter um, when using it, when turning it on, when operating it. It seemed maybe a little bit sleeker, and I think that matches up with their intended use. The hammer blades are meant to kind of be more powerful or just kind of go through whatever you can throw at it, where the wide blades are meant for lighter, finer grasses. You can mow your lawn with it and have a good quality cut. I've heard some guys say they mow with the hammer blades as well on their lawn. Now I've not tried that. We don't have any lawn out here, so to speak, but that leads me into my second observation, which is that both of these mowers handle grasses, like this nice green stuff that you see pretty darn well. The hammer blades, again, these couple passes over here, it actually seemed to almost want to bog it down or put more strain on the engine a little bit more than what the Y blades did over here. However, when you get to those brown patches that you see up there, that's where those hammer blades really excelled. So let's take a closer look. Now this is some of what the, uh, the hammer blades cut up, which looks very similar to what the Y blades cut up as well. Really no discernible difference, the same uh, type and style of cut it seemed to do. So with both of these mowers, it's quite a consistent cut when you're in grasses and maybe with a few little pieces of woody stemmy stuff. It's a different story though when you get to that brown patch back there. So we're standing in more of a woody stemmy type of area, more of that brownish patch that we mowed. And the right side over here is where the hammer blades were at versus the Y blades over here on the left. You can see a lot of these leftover stems and stalks, and it did a, a good job knocking down the majority of them, but it does leave some stragglers. Uh, quite a few more, noticeably more than what the hammer blades leave. You know, the hammer blades just do a pretty good job of, of cutting everything up, and I can, I can pick them out and count them as we go along, just the leftovers, where here it's 15, 20 times the amount that's left over. A couple other notes as well. This is a rock that the hammer blade mower was just ripping up. And honestly, I I knew there was something down there. I didn't know it was doing this much damage to it, but it will handle a rock on occasion. Not like you wanna sit there and run over a whole bunch of rocks, but you're gonna pick them up. And part of the reason for that is flail mowers cut at a pretty low height, just a few inches max cut height. You can see, I mean, it's, you know, my boots are not sinking down into any of the grass that's cut here. They're riding right on top. Now, if you do hit a rock or hit one too many rocks and end up breaking or busting off a blade, you can replace those individually. They're just bolted on, just a small bolt and a nut on there. So you can pop one off, put a new one on, it's a piece of cake. So this is the area that we started out mowing. Y blades over here, hammer blades over here. I think this paints a clear picture. This was an area that we hadn't mowed at all yet. And so the weeds were up, you know, in the two foot-ish range, somewhere around there. You can see all the woody stems that are left over on this side over on the Y blades where there's nothing over here. On the hammer blade side, you can see some shredded wood from something a little bit thicker, but it's a big difference. Now, the one, the one caveat that I haven't mentioned is that I have done a lot of mowing with the Y blades, so they are used or they're worn a little bit on there, but I will say this has held true to my experience, not just now, but previously as well with the Y blade performance. They're gonna get most of it, but they're not gonna get all of it. The more woody stuff that you have, the more it's gonna leave behind. We're gonna try out the John Deere 3025E tractor it's a 25 horsepower tractor, but it's a three series frame size. We're gonna run a 60 inch brush hog on there. We'll do a path uh, up and down. You'll be able to see the difference or the contrast compared to a flail mower, but you can also see for a lot of you that are curious, you get this question with a 25 horsepower tractor running a 60 inch brush hog. Again, I would not run a 60 inch brush hog on a 25 horsepower 1025R. A 25 horsepower 3025E is a different story. The reason being that three point lift capacity is gonna handle that added weight of the 60 inch cutter a lot better. A 60 inch flail mower is sitting a lot closer to your tractor. A 60 inch brush hog is hanging way out back here. And so that's just additional weight. It's gonna make the tractor swing around a lot. The 1025R can just barely pick up a 60 inch brush hog again because that weight is way out here. 62 inch flail mower, no problem for the 1025.
All right, so with the 3025E and the 60 inch brush hog, our couple passes over here, it was a piece of cake really. It wasn't very tall or deep grass. I was trying to cut as short as I possibly could. I kept scalping the ground in a few spots too, but I wanted to try to show you how short you can cut this and you just can't cut it nearly as short. Um, not that you need to with a brush hog, but it does look a little bit more uh, trimmed up with a flail mower. However, the brush hog does a fine job too, going back and forth. Now we did take the 3025 over to that other area as well and get that brush trimmed up. That was two and a half, maybe three foot tall at the most. You know, something that had not been mowed at all this year or really for quite a few years. So it was a lot thicker, a tangled kind of mess, your typical brush that you would expect. The 3025 powered through it. There was not an issue at all running a 60 inch brush hog. I'm sure you could find scenarios where you could really bog it down if it's gonna be really wet material or uh, maybe a late spring and it's just a lot of thick grass in there. Perhaps in that scenario, you wanna go a little bit slower or maybe take a little bit skinnier pass. But overall, a 3025, 25 horsepower tractor is gonna handle that 60 inch brush hog just fine. Anyway, that's a little bit of bonus content for you. A lot of you are kind of in that scenario there of what size brush hog to run on one of these machines. So I figured while I have one, why not try it out? But the main focus of this video was comparing the hammer blades and the Y blades. If you're gonna be in fields like what I have out here, I really think that hammer blades are the way to go. But if you think you might be using this on your lawn or just strictly in an area you're gonna mow repeatedly, that's just gonna be grasses, maybe some weeds mixed in there too. Y blades could be the way to go for you. Again, you don't wanna dwell on that decision too much. The blades are interchangeable. Yes, that comes at a cost, but you can see they both get the job done, but it's more of selecting the choice up front that's gonna be geared towards your primary purpose. So a field like what we have here, hammer blades, grasses, strictly or your lawn, Y blades, they're both gonna get the job done. It's just food for thought. Now, don't forget, you can get your flail mower from Good Works Tractors. We do ship all over the country, right to your house. We have a whole bunch on order coming in the spring for 2022. We are taking orders now, but I'd encourage you at least get yours in over the course of the winter time, maybe early spring at the latest. Once they are gone, they are gone. We can't get any more. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, I'd love to get a thumbs up from you. Why don't you leave a comment down below? Subscribe to see more videos, and if you want something for your tractor, check out GoodWorksTractors.com. Well, I'm hungry. It's dinner time. Time to get going. Thanks so much for taking the time to stop by, and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.